Well, the first chapter is, is all about intense realism. And if you've read my other books, particularly the 33 Strategies of War, you know that that's a theme that's very important in that book. Uh, a strategist, a general, isn't going to get too far in life if he's thinking about what he wants or his ideas or his wishes. He has to focus incredibly intensely on the actual givens of the situation. Now, this was some, an abstract idea that I had by dealing and reading in, in depth about people like Napoleon Bonaparte, my, my favorite strategist of all, or Rommel or whomever. But what happened here in this book that was different um, was that I was dealing with someone who I think is an incredible strategist in life and in business, because he's an incredible business person. And I was seeing these abstract ideas of mine in action. So in dealing with 50 and talking to him and watching him in business, the whole idea of the power that you can have by being extremely realistic and pragmatic suddenly came to life in a way that had not happened in the other books. I trace this in the book to his being a hustler on the streets. 50 came from Queens in New York, which was a pretty middle-class black neighborhood. And if you ever visit it, you're kind of shocked. It's not, it doesn't really look like the hood, hood as you imagine it. There are houses with front lawns and fences. But what happened in Queens is, and what happened in a lot of black neighborhoods, is that you had uh, drugs kind of became uh, a source of income, dealing drugs in the 70s, 60s, and 70s. And these large gangs were, were operating the drug dealing business. But these gangs were structured like corporations. They were very hierarchical. It was almost like Microsoft in a way, not that big, but they were very hierarchical. And if you were a young man who wanted to make some money, you were 14, 15 years old, you didn't want to go to school, and you wanted to get into that drug trade, you had to start at the bottom and work your way up, making no money, etc. And then suddenly crack cocaine exploded in 85, let's say, in places like New York. And the whole thing was destroyed. And overnight, a young man, 50s age, 13 or whatever, could go out on the streets without a gang, without anybody there, and you could make a lot of money dealing with suddenly all of these, the, the demand was, it was insane for this drug. So you didn't have to deal with the gang. You could cut out all the middlemen and do it yourself. In this environment, was incredibly chaotic. You had to think on your feet. You had to worry about the, the, the large gangs that were still trying to muscle you out of the business. You had to worry about the other hustlers. You had to worry about the police. It was kind of like the Wild West. And a person who could succeed in that environment had to be very kind of open and not so rigid and think in the moment and think fast. This fascinates me because I really, really believe that we are living through a moment that is completely analogous to what was happening in all throughout uh, urban America in the 1980s. And Freakonomics talked about this in one of its chapters in the original version of the book, how the drug trade often mirrors what's happening in the larger macro environment. And I think we're living in a world that was like what had happened with the gangs suddenly being exploded, where it became, where it's becoming every man and woman for himself, him or herself. It's extremely chaotic. The old business model is gone. And the people that are going to succeed are those who are not burdened with ideas from the past and who are able to think fast and kind of adapt themselves to a very chaotic environment. This is a concept that Mao Zedong had that always fascinated me from the moment I started researching power and then in the war book. He called it um, complete objectivity, meaning that out in the world there's something happening that's completely objective, that's divorced from our emotions, from our wishes, from our desires. We can never know it exactly as it is because we are human beings with our emotions and all of that. But the closer we can get our minds to, to it, focusing on it, the more powerful we will become. And so that's the process that I'm talking about in this chapter. And seeing someone like 50 who lives that, as opposed to just reading about it in a book, was, was a real eye-opener for me. And it showed me the incredible power of being a realist can bring you in life.